It's been a long time since I've made a Rush video. Since I've sat down and wanted to talk to all my friends out there. All of you who love Rush as much as I do. And a lot's happened since then, me personally. But also I have some major updates. And I have only two words. Oh, Canada. What's going on? Back in January 28th of this year, of 2024, I ordered Neil Peart's last book, Silver Surfers. I made a video about that. You can check it out. You can see it on your screen. I'll put a link in the description. So Silver Surfers. And I was really excited, as were so many of us, to read Neil's last book about his beloved car collection with stories and, and amazing pictures. It's going to be a great coffee table book. So I placed my order. I expected it in May. And then, something like that, somewhere in the summer. But on May 30th, I, I wrote down all the dates. They're right here. On May 30th, I get an email, and uh, or sometime in that time frame, saying the book will not be delivered till May 30th. Okay, all right. And then I got another update. This would be, like, I forget my order confirmation. Update number one, not till May. Update number two, not till August 30th. Three more months. And then on August 12th, a couple days ago, I get a new update. The book will not be delivered until 1117. Right here, holding in my hands, I have the email from the Backstage Club. So this is the big update about Silver Surfer. If you've placed your order, if you've pre-ordered it, right here, I printed it out. Yeah, look at that. Paper. And right here on paper, uh, I have backstage, and it says, Dear Eric, we are contacting you about a recent change to your pre-order. Due to the high-quality nature of the Silver Surfer's book and the demand for the best possible color re reproduction, the team has taken additional time to ensure the book accurately reflects the beautiful photographs of this unique car collection. We have ordered a special European matte art paper, a special black case cloth with silver foil stamping, and a 200-line screen printing to create a state-of-the-art production. Based on the, on the above, and our new publishing date will be changed to November 17th, 2024. And it says, please see a receipt. And here's, here's my thing. I can wait for the book. A little disappointing, and I have to wonder, are you guys okay up there? But I think this is their way of ensuring that it's going to be a beautiful book, a well-crafted book. It's going to look and feel amazing in our hands and before our eyes as we read stories and look at photographs, last work by Neil. But I, I can live with that, okay? As long as I know they're doing a good job, Neil would only want that. He would want this done the best way. And uh, so I have to believe that. Now, here's, here's my bummer. Here's the personal thing. I ordered a couple really cool mugs uh, to go along with the order. And since those are part of the order, I now am waiting almost a year. If we stick to the November 17th of this year, I ordered it back in January. I'm waiting almost a year for these couple of mugs. And a lot of them, a couple of them say, I believe, like, uh, founded in 1974, Rush. And that's important. Because I was founded in 1974. I like to celebrate that with this album. This is vinyl, their first American broadcast. And the date on here is August 26, 1974. First time Rush played America. Happens to be a couple states over the very same day I was born. That's why I love this recording. On my birthday, Rush played America for the first time. They were kind of founded in 1974, if you will, with Neil, of course, and, and I, so was I. Yeah, I'm old. I know. So there's your update about Silver Surfers. Uh, kind of disappointing, but, you know, it is what it is. What, what, can we, what can we really do about it? But I wanted you guys to know from me first, and... Uh, it's been far too long since I made one of these videos. Another update is that my wife came home and surprised me. She has a new job, and she now commutes like I do to go to work. Well, she was out for her lunch break, was in a record shop looking for some kind of album for my daughter. But then she finds this. She finds an original version 
of all the world's stage. That's right. Russia's first live album, besides, of course, that other recording, but this is the first official double vinyl inside of here, covering the first four albums, as you're well aware. And so, yeah, this is it. And what's really cool is I have the 2015 repressing on 180 gram vinyl, okay? And, and check it out. You can see the difference here. One is like, here. Uh, here here's the first one. This is a 2015, right? Ha, sorry. All right, now, th this is the original, okay? Before the computer age, before computer fonts and so on. And they made, some, look, check, look at the difference here, okay? This is original, and this is extra crispy. All right, this is the 2015 one. And you can see different size rush up here, slightly different font, okay? And you can see this, the colors are slightly different. Also at the bottom, a big difference is, uh, this one, of course, says Mercury, their label at the time, and this one, the new one doesn't say anything. Oh, it says a lot more on the back though. So here's the back reproduction. Fonts are again are slightly different, but of course same set lineup, same same lineup of course for the songs. This a little bit of wear on uh, on my, but check it out. Is it Mercury right there? Okay, so you got Mercury here, but then of course. We have the additional labels, and it says Anthem here, of course, and so on. So, inside's kind of similar to, same picture layout, uh, and slightly, uh, slightly crisper photos, but all in all, pretty much the same. The fonts being, and the font sizes being a big difference between, again, the, the original, which I kind of like the original better. Rush is actually bigger, and then the new, the new version, all right? So that is all the world's a stage. I was very excited to get this. Well, the bigger story here, though, is that I went back and listened to it again. I tend to gravitate toward the newer albums, whether they be live, Rush, or whether they be the newer studio album. I just I, when I want to listen to something, I gravitate towards those. Meaning, I, I listen to those more. Um, I love the older stuff. Of course, Twenty One Twelve started my journey. And as it did many of you, when I heard 2112 for the first time, everything changed for the better. I was listening to Top 40 back then and Casey Kasem and, 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 and listening to all the pop music of the day. And that's fine and good, but it wasn't. I didn't even know Rush existed until a fellow drummer had a bunch of cassette tapes in his truck and we're going back and forth to band practice and we were both drummers, and, and he started playing Rush, and my mind was blown. I ordered my first. I threw again one of those music services back then, right? Columbia House kind of thing. And I get my first cassette. This is actually it. This is my original Rush 2112 cassette tape. And again, that all those tape services and stuff like that, the artwork suffered and things like that. And a lot of times they put this massive border around it. Uh, it's almost just promotional things. It didn't matter. I got to hear Rush for the first time. And after that, soon I got my CD player. And then, you, you know, like all of you, you start building that collection and discovering more and more and more Rush. And then as new Rush came out, and by the way, this is like late 80s. So I've been with Rush almost 40 years now. And back in those late 80s, uh, I did get my first CD player and started collecting my Rush collection. And, and then again, around that time, I believe the first one was probably Presto time frame. And then, of course, Roll the Bones was my first concert. And then after that, I saw Counterparts and, and many others since then, all the way up to R40. So what's cool is that All the World's a Stage includes the first four albums of Rush. In fact, I'll take it out for you. So here it is, the original vinyl album case. And inside, inside you can see that they list all of the original albums there, including, of course, photos of the band playing. And if I go full, don't, don't you miss vinyl? I mean, come on, look at that. You don't get this with a download. You don't even get this with a CD. Um, just beautiful stuff. Photos everywhere, they, and then they show pictures of the first horror albums. Uh, so yeah, this is the original. And, of course, several years ago, I got the a, a special box set of, of the first album. 
Rest in peace, John Retzi. And thank you for helping form Rush in the very beginning, before Neil. And uh, inside, they actually have this really cool. They have this really cool masters where you can actually see their hand notated notes about the different uh, reels that they use to record the album in different song lists. So, and of course, it includes uh, stuff from the first album, uh, such as let's see what do we got here. Yeah, Finding My Way, let's see, In the Mood, yep, In the Mood, uh, so, and of course, Working Man, the final track on the first album. After that, of course, Fly By Night, this is the 2015 repressing of that album, I've got it right here, and it includes tracks from Fly By Night, and then fast forward to Caress of Steel, and I want to bring this one up, is it Fly By Night? It is, here it is, on Fly By Night, I really love the version of By Torn a Snow Dog on All the World's a Stage. Um, I've always liked that song. It's quirky. But what you can hear in By Torn and the Snow Dog is you can hear echoes of the future, of what Rush will do and accomplish uh, in the future. You can see them growing and developing this multi-phase song and, and this in-depth story that Neil composed it lyrically. And then, of course, Getty and Alex taking that on us on a musical journey for these massive sets of lyrics that Neil wrote. And we see that also, of course, continuing on the Necromancer, right? On Caress of Steel. Now, fast forward, though, the album that changed my life, the album that started my journey with Rush, of course, is 2112. Complete, of course, with our space sci-fi uh, whatever the heck these things are, they're Komodos. Um, 2112 changed everything. And what's great is there's seven parts to 2112, and they play five of them on All the World's a Stage. So 2112 is on there. Uh, it's actually pretty rare to get a live recording of the entire 2112. Through the years, they've played one or two tracks from it, or they might play five. Uh, but... As you may be well aware, in 1997, that lost recording that came out with the R40 collection um, had at the, I believe, the amphitheater up in Toronto, had a recording of the entire 2112, which is just magical to hear, the, the entire piece. So I wanted to share that with you guys, the update on Silver Surfers. Yeah, we're going to be waiting. And at this point, who knows if I'm going to get another email Another email like this one saying that it's been pushed back to 2025. I hope not. But I also wanted to show you the fact that I have an awesome wife that brought home a Rush live album. I did not previously own the original version of All the World's a Stage. And uh, that now kind of flanks and goes next to my original 2015 version. So I want to catch you guys up on that, and I, I thank you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'm going to be doing more Rush videos. I have a lot planned, a lot I want to do, and I'm hoping that my life um, allows me to do that. You never know what life's going to throw at you sometimes, do you? Recently, my life's been complicated. It's complicated for all of us, isn't it? And if you're out there, and if you're suffering, you're dealing with a lot, just know that... Sometimes it's contained within a day, and then sometimes it's contained within a week. But the storm will pass, and all you can do each day is just keep surviving. Try to thrive in the storm, and know that a brighter day is coming. And it sounds so cliche, but it is true. So long as we remain good people, good to our neighbors and our friends, good to ourselves... And, and do the best we can, then we're going to get through it. So I just want to say that because I know a lot about suffering. And I know all of you, you love Rush, Rush as much as I do. And I also know that everyone has their, that, that the load that they carry, right? Like the Rush song, or, you know, put, that, which is based on the pushing up a boulder up a hill and carrying that load. And um, just know that we all have that. And some of us, it's a physical thing. Some of us, it's psychological. Some of us are dealing with emotional issues. Some, all of them in between. 
including spiritual issues. But know that just be the best person you can. Be true to yourself. Be a rugged individualist like Rush, like Neil. Okay? Be true to yourself. Don't let this world sway you. Use your mind. Use logic. And you're going to get through this. Guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, I'm Loud Boy, Eric. I thank you for being here. And next time we're going to talk about some more Rush. And until then, you guys have a great day. See you next time. Bye.